Mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for life. We won't live in the past. We're making it last. It's time for another conversation. Welcome to Making It Last podcast, where it's all about helping us to have better relationships, not just with ourselves, with other people. We're going to be talking to Debbie Osborne. She's an author, and she's going to tell us a little bit about her book, and then you'll understand why then we're going to be having, we're going to be unpacking this particular topic this time around. It is why are foster parents or step parents, not the people who are supposed to be there? Welcome, Debbie. Thank you very much. Tell us a little bit about your book. Well, it's the story of the, the lessons that I've learned uh, from the kids that I've parented. I have never had biological kids, but I was a foster parent for a number of years. And then mm-hmm. I uh, married a man with five kids. Uh, only two of them were still left at home, but okay. I moved into being a step parent. And um, th- through those experiences, my husband and I, we've collected seven kids and 10 grandkids. Interesting. Interesting. Therefore, you are more than qualified to then (laughs) speak about this because outside of writing about it, you've lived through this. Yes, yes. I I joke. I I make my living as a lawyer, but what I actually do with my life is raise other people's children. (laughs) I like it. I like it. I like it. All right. So why are foster parents or step parents not the people who are supposed to be there? Well, from our kids' perspectives, they all are born with this. I, I think it's just an in, a, a, a inherent bone deep, um, almost a, a primal instinct that they're supposed to have an intact biological family. And that is mm. where they're always coming from. So when their parents split up or the, are never there, they, they, just they feel off kilter in in ways that are hard to uh, verbalize and hard to understand because it is on such a a subconscious level Um, probably my my favorite story explaining this is Mm -hmm. not long after i got married my my husband's ex-wife asked for custody. He, my husband had custody of the two youngest kids and um, his ex-wife asked for custody. And so we were talking to the youngest boy, the one who was most affected. Um, and he, he, he wasn't going to say anything that sounded like he was picking sides. Uh, and we, we didn't want him to pick sides. Mm-hmm. We just didn't want to spend a lot of resources on something that he was opposed to. So my husband finally um, asked him, um, if, if you had a magic wand, what would this situation look like? Mm-hmm. And he, he didn't hesitate. He looked at my husband and said, well, dad, if I had a magic wand, you and mom would still be together. And then there was this pause and then he got this very concerned look on his face, looked over at me and said, no insult, Debbie, you and the dogs would be living right next door. So, (laughs) so, and and, Mm -hmm. you know, my feeling, my feelings weren't hurt. This child Mm -hmm. and I had bonded. We, we did, and we still do adore each other, but I understood that, that, from his perspective, as much as he loved me, Mm -hmm. I was not the person who was supposed to be be. his parent. And if he had had his druthers, I, you know, I'd be the nice lady next door who baked cookies and let him play with my dogs or a a teacher or, or somehow involved in his life, but that his biological parents would still be together. And that's just, um, that's just where our kids are coming from. So I, I always say, whether it's foster parents, obviously as foster parents, we are um, strangers, mm-hmm, you know, kids, mm-hmm. they're, they're, 
their world has fallen apart and their family has been disrupted and they've been moved to live with, with strangers. We hope nice, kind strangers, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. still strangers. And so we have to understand uh, the, the way I always phrase it is we're not the people who are supposed to be there. We never will be. And that's okay. Yeah. yeah. And um, we can build strong relationships in spite of that. As long as we understand our lane and yes. stay in our yes. lane in that yes. in that yes. respect. You actually then you are alluding to what I'm about to ask Ness, which is you're then not supposed to be there with their foster or step parent. How then do you navigate that to ensure then that you do have a healthy relationship with these children? Well, I always um go from the perspective I always tell my my stepsons, look, I'm I'm not your mother. You have a mother, okay. but you are my sons. And that was a way of saying, I'm making this commitment. It's a one way commitment with kids. Mm-hmm. Part of it is because we, they're kids, <laughs> you know, um, it, I, I know some of my, my friends who are step parents or foster parents say, well, the kids just don't, they don't appreciate what I'm doing for them. And I'm thinking, well, kids never appreciate what you're doing Mm. for them. They don't have the maturity or the brain power or the life Mm -hmm. experience Mm -hmm. to, to understand what goes on behind the curtain to make their life the way it is. So just understand that the the commitments with kids, they're, they're always one way Mm -hmm. and that, you know, you need healthy boundaries, but still these are not reciprocal relationships. So you have to be willing to care about them and sacrifice for them and love them and not worry about getting a response. You do Mm -hmm. it because it's the right thing and because you care about them. And, you know, eventually, um, if if you if you don't test their loyalties, mm-hmm. which is one mistake that I see people make. If you don't um, you know, trash their biological parents, if mm-hmm. you just understand that your job is to love them and support them and be uh, a, 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 I call it being a plan B parent. Ah. Um, Hmm. And being plan B can be pretty wonderful. How do you think, though, because you you literally said something that I think is is more common than it should be, which is sometimes, especially for the step parent piece, they might think as if it's almost like they're competing. So they they think Mm -hmm. they have to. I don't want to say bad mouth, but almost make it seem as if, okay, I'm the better option because here it is that <laughs> I am now the chosen one. I'm now the wife or I'm now the husband. Right. You know? Hi, this is Debbie Osborne here on Making It Last, talking about raising other people's children and making relationships last. We're going to take a break now and listen to a word from our partners. Does your business lack branding and having difficulty realizing your vision? Look no further. Splint Brand Design Consultancy specializes in developing personal and business brands. Services include strategic management, website creation, social media branding, and more. Visit them online at www.wearesplint.com. Splint, the branch you need to succeed. Making it last is all I care to do. You loving me, I loving you. Mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for a life. And welcome back as we're here on Making It Last, discussing how you can make relationships not only with ourselves, but with others um, last for a, a lifetime. How, right? how, how well, can we move it, away from, from that tendency, though? Well, first of all, I have to recognize that it's there and it's it's a human relationship okay. to want everybody to recognize that that we are much better in this role than the person who used to be there. 
Okay. And mm -hmm. That's just, it's just a, a human reaction. Mm -hmm. But then we have to step back and understand, well, first of all, if we set up a, a, a popularity contest between okay. ourselves okay. and the biological parents, mm -hmm. we will always lose because we are not the biological parents and mm -hmm. the biological parents will always win. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's self-defeating to set that up. Okay. The other thing that we, the, and I have fallen into this, particularly with, with my foster kids is trying to get them to understand their parents' problems. You know, don't you see that this person had drug addictions? Don't you see that this person um, made bad mistakes? Don't mm -hmm, you see mm -hmm. that this person was an alcoholic or, or didn't care about you enough to, mm -hmm. to work the, the plan? But kids don't want to hear any of that. Yeah. And I have to learn how to say, this is probably one of the, the diciest parts and it, it's it's an art it's not a science i can't give you three mm -hmm. steps to do mm -hmm. this correctly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you have to find the balance between between supporting the kids parents but not letting kids take on their parents problems ah. um you know when 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 parents don't make it to their visitation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you you can't say to the kids well your mom always does this you know, yeah, they, they know yeah. she always does this. They don't need you to say that. What you have to say is adults sometimes have problems or make decisions. And this has nothing to do with you. you. Um, that's the hard thing you have to say to them. And then I always had to learn to say to my kids, um, I'm, I'm sorry, your mom's not here, but, um, well, I, I also learned you, you say, and not, but it's, which is another soapbox, but mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm sorry, your mom's not here. I'm here and I love you. And, and sometimes you have to end that with saying, and now the dishes need to be done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 What, what, what has worked for you and what keeps you going in ensuring that you don't get, for want of a better word, caught up into that madness and literally stay in your lane, as you said earlier? Well, I, I do a lot of um, checking in with um, adult relationships okay. and have a lot of friends and family who help that, that I can talk to. Um, and, and who help keep me grounded. Um, okay. Therapists are always great for that role too. You need people who know you and who care about you. Um, it, it, even therapists in a professional sense who, who have a, a level of professional caring mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. can give you context and, and get you outside of the moment and outside of your bubble um, and, and give you some, some advice. You know, I, 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 my family has always been really good before my husband and, and I were married. There was, there was a miscommunication and I was venting to my brother about it and um, saying, you know, this, this is just not the way it should be, whatever. And, mm -hmm. and my, my brother said, well, yeah, he, he didn't explain things when he should have. And then it got worse because he didn't explain it. And Debbie, he's a guy, get used to it. Wow, and, and that mm. sort of sort of drew me back and and um, made me realize, OK, let's let me get outside of myself here and listen to someone else's perspective. So yeah. I've always had folks who have been able, you know, they let me vent and then they listen and then they'll say, well, yeah, but, you know, you're not the mom and mm. and that's just the way it is. And so now you have to build a different kind of relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we're wrapping up, you've you've said a lot, and I'm sure my listeners and my viewers will benefit. But if everything else literally just flew over their head, what's the one idea you'd want them to get from this conversation? That being a plan B parent is different, that you're not the person who's supposed to be there, but that being a plan B parent can be pretty wonderful. 
it's the most challenging thing I've done, but is the most rewarding thing that I've ever done in my life. Love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much for sharing, Debbie. Sure. Thank you. This was Making It Last podcast, where it's all about helping us to have better relationships, not just with ourselves, but with other people. I'm Noreen Daly. Until next time. Mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for life.